No matter what else is happening in the world. There is always good news today. Welcome to Good News Today, the program where you will always find good news no matter what else is happening in the world. I'm Mark Teske, your host for Good News Today, and I want to thank you for joining us. We've got a great program today. Here's what's coming. We'll begin with our devotional time, as we always do, and that consists of our scripture reading, beautiful singing, and a brief study of our scripture. Today we'll be looking at Psalm 51, the first three verses, a psalm of repentance. So get out your Bibles, turn to Psalm 51, and I'll meet you there in just a moment. Following our devotional time, Roger Campbell will be with us for another Be Ready Always segment. Today he's answering the question, is it possible for people who have done really bad things to be forgiven by God? Jim Dearman's in the studio, and he's got more sound words for us. Today, he's remembering the Titanic and bringing some great lessons from it. Then Cody Boston is back in Cody's corner, and he's got a pencil. We'll see what that's about in just a few moments. In our final segment, Guyton Montgomery and Troy Spradlin will repair our understanding about forgiveness. I hope you have your Bibles opened up to Psalm 51, where we read together. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Psalm 51 is a psalm that David wrote after his sin with Bathsheba. He was confronted by Nathan the prophet in 2 Samuel chapter 12. And what we have here in this psalm is a series of Hebrew parallelisms. He's appealing to God's kindness and His tender mercies. He's seeking something from God after he's been rebellious in sinning against God. And there is nothing that man can do on his own 
to cleanse from sin. He's required to have that from God. Romans chapter 5, verse 8 tells us, While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And in this psalm, David is requesting forgiveness. Now, he's in no position to dictate the terms of his own forgiveness. God hasn't left him. He's the one that's left God. So he must rely upon God to do what God has commanded him to do. We need to do the same thing if we want forgiveness. You see, when a penitent believer is baptized for the purpose of having his sins forgiven, God washes those sins away. Acts chapter 22, verse 16. David also confesses his sin before God. And 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 tells the Christian, that person who has already been baptized, that sins after that baptism, that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. That ongoing forgiveness is for one who is already a Christian. That forgiveness comes to the penitent believer who is baptized so that his sins might be washed away. That's what God says His requirements are for forgiveness of sins, not something that we've made up. When we're truly penitent, we'll do what He asks us to do. And that is good news for us today. Now, Roger Campbell is with us to answer the question, is it possible for people who have done really bad things to be forgiven by God? Be ready always. God's instruction for Christians is, be ready always to give a defense or give an answer. 1 Peter 3 and verse number 15. We want to use the Bible to answer a question that people often ask us. And we understand why people would ask this question. Is it possible for people who have done really bad things to be forgiven? We hear things on the news that, that shock us. The depravity of some individuals, the corruption of their mind and the corruption of their activities. And sometimes people aren't asking about somebody else. Sometimes people are asking about their own lives. They think about the things they've done in the past and they say, how could God ever forgive me? And so they want to know. People who have done really bad things, can they be forgiven? You know, as humans, we, we tend to do that, don't we? We tend to categorize some mistakes as small things and other sins or mistakes as huge or big. Well, the Bible's teaching in James 2 and verse 10 is this principle. If a man keeps the whole law, but he offends it or breaks it in one point, he's guilty of the whole law. That's the way it is when God looks at humans. God doesn't look at the quantity of our sins. The wages of sin is death. Which sin? Any sin. All sin. Romans 6 and verse number 23. Sometimes people make a statement like this. I can't wait to get to heaven. Because in heaven, the only people who will be there are the people who deserve to be there. And all these people who do really bad things... They don't deserve to be saved. I beg to differ, my friend. Nobody will be in heaven because they deserve to be in heaven. None of us by our own goodness, none of us by the deeds that we might carry out could make God be a debtor to us and say, you deserve to come to heaven. None of us deserve to go to heaven. Heaven and salvation are not for those who deserve it. Salvation in this life and eternal life in the life to come is for those who have had their sins washed by the blood of Jesus. Think with me about some New Testament instances where individuals who had been guilty of horrific sins, they'd been cleansed. Or individuals who had been involved in terrible crimes, they were given the opportunity to be saved. For example, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and verse number 9, we read a question. And the question is, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? And then Paul mentions a number of activities 
Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. You say, well, what in the world does it mean that some are effeminate or abusers of themselves with mankind? Other versions read homosexuals and sodomites. And then we read further in verse 10, thieves, covetous, drunkards, revilers, extortioners, none of those people shall inherit the kingdom of God. But listen to verse 11. Paul says, and such were some of you. Notice he's talking about their past. He said, the kind of people I'm describing, the unrighteous, the thieves, the adulterers, the drunkards, he said, some of y'all used to be like that. But read what else he says in verse 11. But ye are washed, ye are sanctified, ye are justified. In other words, they're saved people. A horrible past, but a great present because of the blood of Jesus and a wonderful future. Can horrible people be saved? You better believe it. What about Saul of Tarsus? Saul of Tarsus was doing what? He was tearing up God's family. He was persecuting Christians. And because of that, for the rest of his life, Paul always thought of himself as being unworthy. In 1 Corinthians 15 and, and verse number 9, he said, I'm not me, I'm not worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Was Saul of Tarsus a murderer? Was he forgiven? Yes, he was. What about this? Do you believe that people who had a hand in crucifying the Son of God, do you think they could have their sins forgiven? I'm not asking you if they deserve to have their sins forgiven. None of us deserve that. But on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, we read that as Peter was preaching to the Jews, he said, that Jesus whom you crucified, God made him Lord in Christ. And they cried out, men and brethren, what shall we do? Do you remember Peter's answer? Peter didn't say, I'm sorry. You've been such bad people, the door of salvation is closed. That's not what he said. He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And thank God on that same day, about 3,000 did that. By the grace of God, by the blood of Jesus, is it possible for really bad people to be forgiven? Yes, it is. I'm Roger Campbell, and this has been Be Ready Always. Now it's time to grab some paper and something to write with so you can write down our contact information and enroll in one of our free Bible correspondence courses. After that, Jim Dearman will be with us right after this brief break. You may have questions or comments about Good News Today. We'd like to hear from you. Or if you would like to receive free Bible study materials, please contact us. Our mailing address is Good News Today, P.O. Box 206, Dunlap, Tennessee, 37327. Again, that's Good News Today, P.O. Box 206, Dunlap, Tennessee, 37327. You may prefer to email us at goodnewstodaytv at gmail.com. That's goodnewstodaytv at gmail.com. Or call us toll free at 1 877 384 7221. That's 1 877 384 7221. We'd like to hear from you. Hearing from our audience is always good news to us. I hope you got our contact information for that Bible correspondence course or to ask a question. If you didn't get it, you can get it from our website, gnttv.org. Now here's Jim Dearman with some thoughts from the reunion of survivors of the sinking of the Titanic. Sound words. We will live eternally if we obey sound on April 14, 1992, there were but few survivors of the Titanic disaster 80 years earlier. They met in Boston to remember and talk about what happened. Here are a few of the comments made by the four elderly ladies who met in Boston. One said, it is proof that if you are too proud, too arrogant, something happens. Another comment about the Titanic was that 
It lies there as a monument to man's arrogance. And one survivor said, I remember my mother said, I'm frightened because they say the ship is unsinkable and that is flying in the face of God, which it was. There have been many changes since the unsinkable Titanic sank, but materialism, pride, arrogance, unfortunately, are all still with us. On a given Sunday, the majority of people are not seeking God, but serving self. What have we learned from the Titanic? People are still flying in the face of God. We will live eternally if we obey sound words. Thanks for those thoughts, Jim. There are many ways that you can keep good news in your life today and every day. You can see any of our programs or individual segments anytime you want on our free apps for your phone, tablet, or our Roku, Roku or Apple TV channel. We've also got full programs available on YouTube and Vimeo. You can also hear Good News Today on Truth.fm, which is a group of internet radio stations that stream 24-7. We also have two podcasts, Good News Today Daily Devotional Time and Good News Today Weekly. Those are available wherever you get your podcasts. Now Cody's back in Cody's corner and has some great thoughts while he holds, holds a pencil in his hand. Here's Cody. Welcome to Cody's Corner. Today I want to talk to you about something very simple, something that we use every day, most people do at least, and that is just a pencil. Now this one is a, a mechanical pencil, um, but it also looks just like the number two pencils, right? And, and one thing about a pencil, whether mechanical or number two, you've got your lead in the pencil that, that makes marks and, and uh, you can write with, you can draw with, whatever you want to do. But then you also have your eraser for times when uh, something might be messed up. You might write the wrong word, misspell it. You might want to go back and change what you wrote. You might want to make a correction in a particular drawing that you are sitting down trying to draw out. And so you have an eraser to try to get rid of those mistakes. You have your lead to try to write and, and uh, accomplish whatever it is you want to put down on the sheet of paper or wherever it is you're drawing. And so with a pencil, something so simple, something that is uh, used so frequently by so many people, I wonder if there's maybe some lessons we could take away from an object like this. And there's a couple of things I just want to remind you of, and you might have heard a few of these before. Uh, but I think reminders are always great. So I just want to talk about a few things that if we, when we pick up our pencils to write each day, if we just think about a few of these things, I think our day will be a lot better. I think we'll do a lot more for the kingdom, and I think we'll impact the lives of other people in a lot, um, in a lot more effective way in which our lights are shining through. And, and so one thing, the first thing that I think about with a pencil is the primary purpose that is to, to write down whatever, is, whatever it is we want to write down. I would cautious, uh, caution us, rather, that everything that we do leaves a mark. Everything that we say leaves a mark. Everything that we do leaves a mark. Everything about our lives is going to leave marks on the lives of others. Now, the mark isn't always negative, right? It can be a positive mark. Uh, for example, in Acts 17, uh, there's this statement that these people are turning the world upside down. They were living for Jesus and, and they were shining their lights and they were doing what they were called to do and, and what they knew would please God. And as a result, it was impacting the lives of other people. They noticed what was happening and they responded. Now, they didn't respond in a, a good way, right, in a favorable way, but it left a mark. So doing the right thing leaves a mark on the lives of others. So does doing the wrong thing. Remember the danger that James 3 gives us when it comes to the tongue. And it talks about a forest fire. You remember that? But it, 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 in talking of a forest fire, it says the tongue is a small member, just like the bit in the horse's mouth, just like the rudder on a boat. The tongue is a small member when it's compared to other members of the body, yet it is so powerful, just like it only takes a spark to get this uncontrollable fire raging. The danger of the things that we say and the danger of the things that we do. Everything we do leaves a mark. So with that statement, I, I would encourage you, remember that and make sure that the marks you're leaving are marks that are improving the lives of other people 
and that are shining your light and letting people know that you are a servant of God. But what about those marks that we wish we didn't make? The good news is there is an eraser. The blood of Jesus washes away our sins. And when we are baptized into Christ, we come into contact with that blood, and that blood washes away our sins. And then as we live each day, 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7 tells us, If we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ His Son cleanses us from all sin. The blood works to cleanse us as we walk in the light. When we choose to follow Him, we're going to make mistakes, we're we're going to sin and fall short, but we have an opportunity to be forgiven. We have the blood that serves as an eraser. When we repent of our sins, the blood erases those sins. Be careful about the marks that you make. And when you make the wrong marks, repent and turn back to God. Well, that's it for my corner of the world. I hope that you have a blessed day. Cody had some excellent thoughts about the effect of our actions on others. I'm not sure that I'll ever look at a pencil the same way again. In just a moment, we'll be repairing our understanding with Guyton and Troy. Both of these men are associated with the Northwest Florida School of Biblical Studies. Classes from the school are available online and are free of charge. You can sign up for the next semester that begins the beginning of January on their website at nwfsbs.com. We'll be right back with Guyton and Troy after this brief break. Guyton and Troy repair our understanding as they answer the question, can a person sin so much that they can't be forgiven? You know, Troy, you know, a lot of people think that the the benefit of being a preacher is we only work one day a week. (laughs) A lot of people think that. That is true. (laughs) You only have to work on Sunday, right? But it's not true, by the way. (laughs) No, it's not true. But there are great benefits of, uh, of preaching and the benefits of being a preacher. You know, we always say that our retirement plan is out of this world. That's right. Exactly. (laughs) But, but, you know, we get to help a lot of people because of the position that we're in as preachers. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sometimes it's through using the church pantry to help people with food. Sometimes it may be um, some benevolence that we do on behalf of the church, and we get to see um, people be touched by that. But I think there's really something even greater, and that's when somebody comes and sits down with me and they are struggling with the, the burden and weight of sin. And to be able mm. to show them that the blood of Jesus is able to bring them forgiveness. And when they're lowered into the water grave of baptism to wash their sins away, um, they, are, they are so come up, this new creature, and to see this weight of guilt that has left them, to me, is one of the greatest privileges. Amen. Amen. I completely agree. In fact, uh, Makes me think of the Apostle John when he says, No greater joy do I have than to see my little children walking in truth and in light. And so, yes, it is such a wonderful feeling. Well, the question comes in today wanting to know is, can a person sin so much that they can't be forgiven? And Hmm. and I've I've actually Hmm. had people come into the office, and I think they, they feel that way. Yes. Because maybe they've had an abortion, maybe they've lived you know, years neglecting their family, maybe they, uh, you know, just whatever it is that they feel so much guilt over, they think there's no way that God can forgive me. Yes, and I've experienced that too, and it's sad to see uh, the souls that, that are grieving like that. Exactly, and so 
you know, to answer the question is, can I sin so much that I can't be forgiven? The answer to that is no. Uh, I remind us from first John chapter one, verse seven. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son cleanseth us from all sin. Yeah. And one of the key things of that is if we walk in the light. And so it means that you can make a choice and you walk in the light and it cleanses us of all sin. It makes me think of Mark chapter three, verse 28, when Jesus is talking and he says, assuredly, I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the sons of men. Well, how much is all Guyton? That's, that's everything. <laughs> exactly. So all sin will be forgiven. Now, are there sins that won't be forgiven? Well, we can read of one sin actually in that passage that it talks about that won't be forgiven. But the reality is, as we're going to explain is only a sin that's not repented of. That's right. That's the key to understanding that passage I read is there in Mark three, it goes on to say, but he who blasphemes against the Holy spirit never has forgiveness, but is subject to eternal condemnation. And I've had people walk in my office and go, Troy, I've blasphemed the Holy spirit. And I said, well, you need to understand the context. Because what you said, it comes down to repentance. Exactly. And now if you are, the word blasphemy is just like going against. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're going against, you're not in the act of repenting. That's right. And so you cannot blaspheme and repent. If you're repenting, you're going to God. You're going to his word. You're going to Jesus. And so you're not going against. So the only sin that can't be forgiven would be the unrepented of sin. That's right. And how many sins... Uh, unrepented sins does it take to keep you out of heaven? Only one. Only one. And so it all comes down to repentance, you know. So it, it comes back to the heart. God wants the heart, and, and that's really what matters. So can you sin so much that you can't be forgiven? Well, it depends on your heart. It, exactly. And so if you're watching this this morning, I want you to find comfort. There is no amount of sin that you have done in your life that God cannot forgive you of through the blood of Jesus Christ. You just simply need to turn to him, his word, and find the forgiveness that he offers to all men. Amen. If you're still stuck in your sins, we would encourage you to repent of those sins and have them washed away in the watery grave of baptism, as we read in Acts chapter 22, verse 16. We encourage you to check what we've taught in this program against the teaching of the word of God. You can hear it again on our apps or on our website, and we'd love to hear from you. Contact us for a free Bible correspondence course or to ask us a question. Remember, we love you, we're praying for you, and we want you to get to heaven. Good news, always good news, good news, good news, there is good news today. Good news, good news, the world. Always good news, good news, good news, there is good news today, all around the world, good news, good news, the world, always good news, good news, good news, there is good news today.